you've seen them. Zipping through the streets, blocking the sidewalks. Dockless electric scooters have appeared virtually overnight in dozens of cities. So far this year, millions of rides were taken on little machines just like this, and their operators have raised billions in investments. So if you haven't yet, chances are you're going to see stuff like this pretty soon. We see the scooters navigating through pedestrians. We see them being left anywhere, and this creates you know, problems for a number of people. Problems indeed. If people on dockless scooters or bikes keep on using the sidewalks, it's going to get crowded. The purpose of the sidewalk has changed considerably over the last hundred years. When cities first started building sidewalks, the reason for them was to accommodate pedestrians on the street, but this was not the only use of sidewalks. There were a number of other social uses. A lot of that happens before the automobile. This street scene is San Francisco in 1906. Notice the man holding a baby just walking straight through traffic. Nobody seems too concerned. They are quite relaxed about it, and they also know how to navigate the street. But eventually, cars got bigger and faster. Traffic had to separate. We start seeing, with the proliferation of the cars, many, many cities start widening their streets. And of course, this happens at the expense of the sidewalk, because a lot of times the buildings were pretty much set. So, you know, a sidewalk that might have been 12, 15 feet becomes uh, six, eight feet. Which is pretty unfair for pedestrians, because there's a lot more happening on sidewalks than walking. There's the frontage zone. In cities, a business might put a cafe or signs there. Then there's the furniture zone, full of street lights, newspaper racks, benches, and stuff like that. Because sidewalks have frontage and furniture zones, pedestrians have a smaller space to travel than it might seem. Some vigilantes have taken the issue into their own hands, and many cities have used pilot programs to really get the scooters under control. But these pilots are likely to extend. After all, cities need alternative modes of transportation. First, it takes vehicles off the street because people who might be using ride hail or taxis or another personal vehicle might instead opt for this other solution. So if a person takes a subway or a bus to a certain station or stop, and they still live a mile away from that station, they have to figure out how to get there. Even in cities with exceptional public transportation, many residents have to travel a last mile. If dockless vehicles are deployed in more areas like this, residents could make better use of public transportation and not just rely on cars. Because what many people will do is say, I don't have a last mile option that works for me, so I'm just gonna drive the whole way. The cash influx for scooter share is really a bet. Investors hope that e-scooters can capture demand in underserved transportation deserts without adding congestion. And the scooters might pull that off. One survey found robust support for e-scooters as a substitute for short driving trips. But the scooters won't work if their riders have to compete for space with pedestrians or cars. We're reaching a point in cities across America where it's time to get people out of their cars and allow people more modes. Smaller transportation, bikes, segways, and yes, scooters, they only work when cities make space for them. Planners can do this by designing complete streets. Complete streets is a new term that entered the lexicon of transportation planning relatively recently. Basically is inspired by earlier streets where you used to have all these different social uses of the streets and sidewalks, not only uh, streets for cars or even sidewalks for pedestrians. Complete streets start by reducing the amount of space given to cars. Then the city can build protected bus bulbs, wider sidewalks, street level plazas, and buffered bike lanes. Scooters will be a more realistic last mile option when cities build networks of complete streets. 
So worry not, dear pedestrians, even if the scooters are here to stay. Cities are drafting standards for this brave new world of alternative transportation. And with any luck, the love for scooters just might push cities to build safer, more accommodating streets. Hey, thank you so much for watching and a big thank you to the University of California who hit the streets to help us film this episode. You can check out their video on the environmental concerns of shopping right here. Again, thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.